All right, Shalom, Shalom. It's Brother Tazadak here with Israel. Before I get started, give me all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Kakwadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Today we're going to Hosea chapter 5 and 6, going to the Hebrew. So, Lord willing, you're edified, giving all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Kakwadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. So let's get right into it. All right. Uh gonna touch on a few things. Um so let's start off with the uh let's just go right into chapter five. The Hawa Basham Yaw Shai brought the thumb to uh 144,000, and then the great multitude, which will be delivered out of America, Babylon, great after the uh, destruction, which the Most High God is going to bring. First, you got to have the main focal point prophecy is the Haragma, Revelation 13 and 16. Then the third world cometh. Most High God is going to rain fire and brimstone upon the uh, wicked city, right? Shalom to the hopeful elect, which is the remnant also known as the remnant and two-thirds well just read uh Zechariah chapter uh what's that chapter 13 gonna be destroyed right but anyways verse 1 Hosea 5 and 1 says hear this O priest and hearken House of Israel, and the house of the king, hearken because unto you is judgment. Because the net, it, because a, a, a snare thou art unto Mitzvah, and a jinn spread out upon Tabor, Salakia. One moment. Jin thou art spread out upon Tabor. The sprint and the, the jinn spread out upon Tabor. So read Shamai Wa, Zaath, Ha Kahanyam, Waha Kwashiab Wa, Bayath Yasha Allah, Wa Bayath Ha Malak, Ha Azian Wa, Kaya Lakam, Ha Mashapat, Kaya Pach. Haya Yatom La Matazapa Wabrashath Parsha Al Tabor. So the Lord is saying, or to you, the house of Israel is given uh, to no judgment. Like the translation says here. For right conduct is your responsibility. Right? But the Lord said, You have been a snare to Mitzvah, and then that spread out over Tabor. Right? Because, like I said previously, the Northern Kingdom always rebelled, they always went off. No Northern Kingdom uh, king uh, did any good. Right? Verse 2. Which says, uh, and make slaughtered those that go about profoundly, and I will be a rebuker to all of them. Wa shakata 
Shatium Ha Anyak Wa Wa Anya Masor La Kalum Because that word uh, Shat or Shawat is the root. Uh, you read about that in the book of Job. It just means uh, to go uh, to go about, to go up and down. Right? That's what Satan, Satan said to the Most High God when he said, uh, from where comest thou? He said, from going to and fro on to the earth. Right? Of course, I mock, it means uh, a veil. Very, uh, um, a valley, right? But in this case, it's uh, used in a sense of being profound, right? As a uh, verb, right? Third in the uh, third person. And the Lord said, "I will be a rebuker to them all." Hosea 5 and 3. And I know Ephraim and Israel is not um, is not disowned for me or not forsaken of me. Because now thou hast fornicated Ephraim, Israel is the Israel is defiled. Which reads Anya Yadai Taya. Orium, wa yashaalu laa na kahad ma manya kaya aita hazanyath porium na tabaa yashaalu. Ephraim is mentioned because Ephraim is the uh, the head, right, of the northern kingdom. Right, it's not talking about northern southern kingdom here, because it says Ephraim in Israel. Ephraim, let's look at um, the first king of the northern kingdom, Jeroboam the first, which the word, the name is uh, Yerabim, and he increaseth the people, right? Because he's the one who caused the uh, revolt for the uh, ten tribes. Right, uh, to revolt from the uh, from the um, from the uh, house of David, right? So you you can uh, look it up yourself, or I'm just going to read this part. So Jeroboam was the son of Nabat, a member of the tribe of Ephraim of Zerida, right? So he was an Ephraimite, right? And uh, let's look this up real quick. Oh, tribes. Oh, right, so you can see. It's not really ten tribes because you have Naphtali, Iskar, Asher, Reuben, Gad, Zebulon, um, Ephraim, Manasseh. All right, so that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, but you had some of the Levites, which were scattered. Uh, amongst all tribes, right? So that makes it nine, right? And uh, ten because the tribe of Dan, right? But the tribe of Dan is really uh, amongst all tribes as well, right? So that's ten, right? Then you have Judah, Benjamin, Benjamin, Levi, and Simeon. Right.
So let's go back. X out of that. And so Jeroboam, right? You can read, you can pause the video and just read a little bit of this, this area which uh, speaks about him, but we're going to move on, right? Because the point is that this verse is talking about the heads of the northern kingdom and the northern kingdom as a whole, right? Hosea 5 and 4 has not been... Uh, they have not they have not considered their backslidings to return unto their God because the spirit of whoredoms is in their midst. And unto the Lord they have not known, which reads La'a, Yathanwa, Ma Alal Yaham, La Shawab, Al Allah Yaham, Kayabraka, Zan Wanyam, Ba Korab. Korama, wa atha Yahweh laa yadai wa. Right, that word yathan it just means to place or to give, but this is in the sense that they have not considered their backslidings to return unto their God because the spirit of whoredoms is in their midst. They have not, and unto the Lord they have not known. Right. Which you see uh, today as well, right? You see the Northern Kingdom still with their uh, Virgin Mary, right? With candles all over it. Still got their uh, whitewashed image of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ, which that's not his name. His name is Yahweh Shai Hamashayach, right? Yah meaning he, Yahweh Shai, deliverer. Ha meaning the Mashayach, anointed, right? Messiah is just another way to say Mashayach. It's just a uh, uh, translated from the Hebrew to the Greek, right? Hosea 5 and 5. An answer is the pride of Israel uh, before them, which says, uh, it's like, you know. Because that word I now means to answer, or in this case, figuratively to testify, right? And testify of the pride of Israel before them, right? Or before their face. And Israel and Ephraim, uh, they, shall, they shall stumble upon their iniquity. And stum stumbleth even Judah with them, or will stumble even Judah with them, right? Because eventually the northern, the southern kingdom will get cast off as well, right? So it says, Wa Aina, Ga Awan, Yasha'ala, Ba Panyawa, Wa Yasha'ala, Wa Aparium, Ya Kashal Wa, Ba Iwanam, Kashal, Gam Yahawada. Ima, meaning uh, with them. Their iniquity is not uh, keeping the ways of Yahweh Bashmi Oshai, right? Hosea 5 and 6 says, Upon their flocks and upon their herds they go to seek unto the Lord. For they shall go to seek unto the Lord, and they will not find him. Uh, it says uh, they are drawn away from him. Right, let's look at that word, halatazah. 
just means to draw out, right? Meaning they have forsaken the Lord. Or withdrawn, like it says here. It says to draw out, draw off, to withdraw. So it reads, Ba Tazaan Taza Anam Waba Bakwar Bakwarma Yalakwa La Bakwash Ata Yahawada Ata Yahawa Wala Yama Taza Awa Hala Taza Maham Hosea five and seven Upon the Lord they have been treacherous because Sons, children strange, they have brought forth. Now they will be consumed. Now will consume them the new moon unto their portion. Which reads, uh, Bayahawa, Bagadwa, Kaya, Banyum, Zorium, Yaladwa, Aita. Ya Akalam Hadash Ata Halak Yaham. What is that talking about? Eventually, uh, the Lord bring the Assyrians, right? To siege them, right? So you would have things like uh, famine uh, in the siege. What do you do? You attack the, uh, the, the resources, right? The wells and the, um, the granaries, right? Which is what you see uh, happening in, in America, Babylon, great. Because there has to be a way for the economy to fall. It has to be done via what? A controlled demolition, right? So you're going to have things like uh, um, inflation. You're going to have things like um, there's going to be plenty, but it's going to be at it. You're going you're gonna, to uh, get it at a cost. It's going to cost you. Right, which is why scriptures say that they shall think to be in a good case, but really, right? Esau Edom, he knows what he's doing, right? Because he controls uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the resource, right? So all these things he is turning into snares, right? Why? Because scriptures say that that there's a uh, perverse spirit mingled in the midst thereof, right? Because uh, whether you like it, believe it or not, right? America, Babylon, Great is under a siege, right? By we have what uh, Chinese police stations set up in America, Babylon, Great. You have cells. You have uh, sleeper cells, right? You have other nations, right? That they see that that they're talking their uh, their their mess. Because they know Esau Edom is weak, right? They're military, right? Like I recently mentioned at camp, you have the government recently, they have uh, said that they are um, watching for extremist groups in the military, right? So this is what's what's going on, right? And this is what happened uh, when the Northern Kingdom got invaded by the Assyrians, right? Strange children means that what? They took the wives of the other nations and eventually, right, they uh, they were um, uh, enticed to sin by the worship of other gods, right? So that's what it means. The new moon shall devour their portion. Because the Lord is going to bring, uh, the Lord brought difficulty via these uh, the foreign invaders. Right. Which it reminds me, you know, they're trying to uh, paint the northern kingdom now as a uh, right, foreign invaders. They always want Esau always wants a scapegoat. He always wants to uh, create division somehow. Right. 
So that's how you create a separation, right? A division within the people. You put it in their minds that a particular group is uh is um right is it is uh increasing in a particular group, right? Is upset about it, right? When really, right, Esau Edom is behind everything, right? In a sense, but you know, the nations they're doing their own thing as well, right? So the point is that this is what happens in the siege, right? What you have gets consumed within that month, right? So you have to, uh, you have a scan, you're left with what? A scan measure, right? This is what Esau Edom is doing, right? His plan is is for what? Is for the prices to go up, the crime to go up. He wants uh, uh, um, job insecurity, right? He wants to create chaos, right? How is it that all of a sudden they never had uh, in the news uh, people looting? And now all of a sudden particular stores are closing because of that certain fact, right? So this is all controlled. This is all, right? And like recently Elder Pastor said, we're going to see what the World Economic Forum says. I believe they're starting their uh, meetings uh, today, right? Maybe they'll talk about the Karagma, maybe not, right? So the scriptures say to watch, right? And uh, know that measure the times diligently within itself right so the new moon shall consume their portion so like i said that that's talking about uh famine right which happened back then now let's look at the uh, history behind the uh syrians so this is from godquestions.org when and how was Israel conquered by the Assyrians? The answer is Assyria's conquest of the northern kingdom of Israel began approximately 740 BC under King Pole. First Chronicles 5 and 26 notes. So the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pole, king of Assyria, the spirit of Tiglath, Peleser, king of Assyria, and he took them into exile, namely the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and brought them to Hala, Habor, Hara, and the river goes on to this day. It says these tribes located east of the Jordan River were the first ones conquered by Assyria. Right, so they took the Gadites, the half-tribe of Manasseh, the Reubenites, and it says... Nearly 20 years later, 722 B.C., the capital city Samaria was overtaken by the Assyrians under Shalmaneser V. After first forcing tribute payments, Shalmaneser later laid siege to the city when it refused to pay. Following a three-year siege, 2 Kings 17 and 5 through 6 notes that in the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria, captured Samaria and he carried the Israelites away to Assyria and placed them in Hala, right? So because the reason I'm reading this is because the Bible hub says that uh, that alludes to the Assyrian um, uh, conquest, right? But that's not uh, what what the uh, the history says, right? It didn't happen in a month. It happened within the span of twenty years, twenty some years, right? So it says. Uh, See if I got the uh, no, that's not it. Let 
Hosea 5 and 7. So it says the month may be a personification of the period of a month during which takes place the now closely impending, perhaps already commenced invasion by Tilgath Pelezer. So there's no account really on that, right? It's that word, but God. It means garment, but it also means um, uh, to deal treacherously, right? Or to act covertly. Really, it means to act covertly. Let's see. Uh, let's look up the definition for covertly. So definition says secretly or in a hidden way. Not openly shown. A masking or concealing device. Let's look up some synonyms. Covertly. Okay. Synonyms. Collusively, inwardly, underhanded, right? Look up the word uh, treachery. Treachery is a behavior that deceives or is not loyal to someone who trusts you. Right? So it can mean uh, deceitful. Right? Because what do you do when you try to, uh, right, to be acting in a covertly manner? Right? You, you're kind of hiding things. Right? Just like you would take a garment and kind of you know, uh, you would have mantles back then that, that right, uh, like the Witch of Endor that, uh, that uh, Saul inquired on too, right? She, he was covered um, with a mantle because he was, he was hiding him, who he was, right? Because he had outlawed uh, um, uh, those type of uh, individuals from the uh, land, right? And even uh, Samuel, right, when Samuel was uh, brought forth, right, he had a mantle over his head, right? But that just, I'm just comparing uh, the word garment and um, being acting covertly, which is why uh, it makes sense that, that that word is God, right? Anyways, moving on, Hosea chapter 5 and verse 8 says, um, Blow the ram's horn in Gebeah, the trumpet in Ramah, sound the alarm in a house at Beth Avon, after thee, O Benjamin. Which reads, Takwaiwa. Shapar, Ba Gabaya, Hataza Tazara, Ba Raba, Ha Rayaiwa, Bayath Awan, Akaryaka, Banyamyam. Now let's look at uh, what that means Hosea 5 and 8.
So you can't always go by the uh, blue letter, Bible Hub, the commentaries, right? Right, so it doesn't really mean anything in particular. So it says here, the words present, the image of an enemy in close pursuit, ready to fall upon the rear of Benjamin. But that doesn't make sense because those uh, the two kingdoms were divided uh, around that time. Right? So you could say it just means that, uh, right, because the northern kingdom wasn't keeping up the uh, the high holy days, right? Didn't keep the ways of Yahweh Shemuel Shai, right? So they were doing their 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 own um, offering up their own sacrifices, right? Hiring their own uh, priests, not not the Levitical priests. Um. So of course they would blow a trumpet during a particular time, but. They would be uh, basically not keeping the days, right? The high holy days. So they would sound, you know, their particular uh, alarms to gather together for their, for their holy days after Benjamin, after the uh, southern kingdom. So Benjamin would, uh, for example, he would hear them sound the, uh, the ram's horn, right? After uh, the... Uh, the southern kingdom had already sounded their alarm for the actual high holy days, right? So it's not that deep, right? You can kind of, uh, just to give you a little uh, picture on how that would look, right? So Hosea 5 and 9 says, Ephraim is... Uh, Ephraim desolate will be in the day of reproof upon the tribes of Israel, and I will make known my cert, uh, and I will make known what is certain, right? As in the uh, disasters that he would bring to the uh, northern kingdom, right? So it reads, Aparium la Shema, the Haya, by Yawam. Kaha Ba Shabatya Yasha Allah Hadaitaya Na Amana as in the judgment that he would bring, right? In having the northern kingdom tribes carried off. So Hosea five and ten reads. They have, been, they have been the princes of Judah, like those that shut out the border against them. I will pour like water my wrath. Which you read about in the New Testament, right? You had the southern kingdom. Uh, when Yahweh came on the scene, he called some of these, uh, not the southern kingdom necessarily, right, but the uh, Gentiles, which were, uh, uh, they, they had left off from the lost manners and customs of, uh, of, of the same, their same kinsmen of the tribe of Judah, which they were called uh, Jews, but that was really talking about Judah, Benjamin, Simeon, Simeon, Levi, and in a few northern kingdoms still uh, amongst them. Why? Because they were zealous uh, for the Lord, and they they had uh, cast off these uh, um, the Gentiles, which were of the same stock of Israel, which were persecuted by the Greeks and the Romans. Right, starting with the Greeks. So they had uh, 
followed the manners of the Greeks and the Romans, which they before were following after the manners of their forefathers, right? Same as the Jews, because they were the same nation, right? So it says, Hayawa Sharia, Yahawada, Kama Sayagya, Gabal, Al Yaham, Ashapak, Kamayim, Ibarthaya. So that's really the mystery of the Gentiles. When you read the New Testament, right, you're reading about what? The Jews and the Gentiles, but they were of the same nation of Israel. Just like today, uh, we all fell into a Gentile state of mind because we're following after the ways of uh, the new Rome, right? Spiritually, uh, Sodom, Egypt, right? And you have even, um, that's why you have other camps that say that that it, that the, uh, the Jake looks a certain way. But some of us have uh, a lighter complexion, darker complexion. Some of us look like uh, so-called white people, but really it's of the same um, uh, nation of Israel, right? So some of us look like other nations because when you take a wife of the other nation, right, your children look like the other nations, right? So that's really what these other camps don't don't push. Because they're they're uh, right, because they're paid to deceive, right? So the this is why it says Judah has acted like shifters of field boundaries. So the Lord was going to eventually pour out His wrath upon them as well. So it reads, "Hayawa Shoria Yahabuda," or Salaki. I already read that. Hosea 5 and 11, it says uh, Ephraim is an extortioner. Or Ephraim is extorted, crushed, and judgment because he has came near to go uh, afar off from the commandment, right? Which far is not really far off, it means after or behind. That's just another way to say afar off. You all doesn't mean willingly, it just means uh, to come near. Which you can say it means uh, to undertake, right? To walk not after the commandment, meaning to walk as, as in uh, away from the commandment, right? The word Aishak means extortion. Rataza Taza, that means uh, to crush. So let's look at that word, strong 7533. To crush, to oppress. To break, to bruise, to crush.
Hosea uh, 5 and 12. Reads, and I like a moth will be unto Ephraim, and like rottenness to the house of Judah, which is where you get the word Esau, right? Ishashua, it means moth or wasted away, right? Because what what did eventually the Northern Kingdom do, right? took wives of the other nations right the lord made that happen because what what do you think happened when the northern kingdom was carried to assyria they mingled with the assyrians right then they came to the americas and eventually took the edom certain edomite wives right and now they look like the edomites right some of them And like rottenness, the house of Judah, because eventually Judah, right, he had no choice but to but to mix with the Hamites, right? Elder Pastor Har recently did a video, right? So Jake had it, you know, eventually, right? And that's 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 kind of a blessing in disguise, you know, because that's a way to kind of uh, uh, mix in. Right, so there's a reason why Northern Kingdom even mixed with the Edomites, with their women, not the actual Edomites. Because it was a way to look like them. Right? But there's a there's a there's a curse behind that because the Edomite women, you know, they age fast, right? The Hamites, you know, they some of them, I mean, there's some there's some good looking Hamites women you know but then some of them look like you know throw up right i mean just like the edomite women i mean some of them are smoking hot some of them are just they look like shit so that's why i said that i will be on to ephraim as a moth to the house of judah as rottenness right so it reads wa anya ka aisha La aparium, waka requab la bayat yahabuda. Requab means rottenness, right? Like a rotten apple would be a requab uh, pacha. Uh, Hosea 5 and 13. And he saw Ephraim unto his sickness, and Judah. Unto his wound, and he went Ephraim unto Assyria, and he sent unto the king Yareb, and he was not able to heal, uh, to heal you, and was not able to cure you of your womb. That word for cure is gaha. Says to depart, to be cured, to be healed. I believe it means something else, too. Let me see if I can look that up. All right, so the book of Hosea can really, there's a lot, there's a lot to uh, pick apart from it. And I noticed not many people go into the book of Hosea, right? But there's a lot you can pick pick apart from it, especially pertaining to the uh, Northern Kingdom. So it says a cure medicine.
Let's see. Let's see if I can check my notes real quick. We have uh... So don't confuse it with uh See if I can just look that up. It's the word for uh, grief. Which that word is yaga, right? Let's go back. Uh, do the precept. Hosea five and thirteen. So that word uh, for wound is mazawar. Meaning wound, injury. So it says the root is a war in the sense of a. Uh, Binding, right? There's a war or tuz a war. Let's see if I got that in my notes. That's a war. So it means a wound or bandage, right? Because it would literally mean ma as in of, zawar or tazar, meaning to bind. So there's just talking about the division amongst the tribes, right? Because the Lord made them do what they did. Northern Kingdom, what they they uh, they created a uh, let's see. Let's look it up. Backslidings of Northern Kingdom.
This is uh, 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 26. So David, did these people go up to offer sacrifices at the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem? They will again give their allegiance unto the Lord, Rehoboam, king of Judah. They will kill me and return to Rehoboam. Verse 28, after seeking advice, says the king made two golden calves. He said to the people, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. One he set up in Bethel and the other in Dan. This thing became a sin. The people came to worship the one at Bethel and went as far as Dan to worship the other. So it says, verse 31, Jeroboam built shrines on high places and appointed priests from all sorts of people, even though they were not Levites. Verse 32, he instituted a festival in the 15th day of the eighth month. Right, So he created his own festivals, his own altars. Right, He made uh, the northern kingdom sacrifice to the golden cows. Told them not to uh, keep the keep the high holy days, right? So they were going the hell off. So let's just exit out of this. So that's why it says. Hosea 5 and 13, when Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, then went Ephraim to the Assyrian and sent to King Jareb. Yet could he not heal you nor cure you of your wound? Let's just take a look at that verse in question. It says to the Assyrian, their adver adversity leads Ephraim to seek protection from their formidable foe instead of turning to the Lord. So the Northern King eventually saw help from the heathen. So Jareb apparently was an Assyrian monarch. Yada, 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 right? So that's just talking about the division uh, between the tribes. You can look that up yourself. Maybe uh, do some reading for a change and put down the, the damn uh, Big Mac, right? Hosea 5 and 14 says, because I will be like a lion unto Ephraim. And as a young lion to the house of Judah, I, even I, I will tear and I will go. I will lift up and there will be none to deliver. Meaning, why did he say as a lion to Ephraim, a young lion to the house of Judah? Because the Lord was wroth with the northern kingdom more than the southern kingdom. Right? That word for lion is Shechol. Which it says, from an unused root, probably meaning to roar.
Let's look that up. Shahol. Which is uh So it says a lion, figuratively. That's not the actual word for lion. Uh, neither does it mean to roar, because that word is sha'ag. But you can compare it to the word uh, lahash, meaning to whisper. Right? Or shahar, meaning black. Right? Which the ra... It's just replaced with with the uh, with the lie, right? Kind of like the groanings of a of a lion. Mainly, uh, I believe sometimes or most of the time it's referenced as an old lion. So it just says lion here. So it's poetic, figurative for lion. Let's see what else we get from uh, that word call. So you have shakhalat. And let's go to shakhal. See if it's the same one. Yep. Look up old line. Image, All right? So it looks kind of dark, you know. But it's figurative uh, for lion, right? Capiar is talking about a cub, right? Because Lord, the Lord wasn't really dealing that much judgment to the uh, Southern Kingdom at that time. Right, because they hadn't fully uh, been going off. So it reads: uh, Kaya Anakya Kashahol La Aparium Waka Kapyar La Bayath Yahawada Anya Anya. Atarap Wa Laka Asha Wa Ayan Matazayal. Verse uh, fifteen. I will go, I will return to my place, even to which they um what's that word I shown? I believe that word is a uh, trespass. Yep, so it says, even in, even in which they, they trespass and seek my face in distress to them, Says they shall seek me be, be times. 
as in early. There's that word shahar again. Which actually, it means like twilight, I believe. Let's look at the root. To be black, to be dim, and uh, says dawn. Let's check out the notes once again. Shahar. That means. The dawn, as in dawning of the day, or sahar to trade or commerce or exchange. So the Lord said, I will go, I will return to my place until which they trespass, meaning until they reach that breaking point, right? And the Lord has to judge them. And seek my face in the in in their distress, basically. They shall seek me early. Which it reads Alaka Ashawaba Al Makwamya Ad Ashar Ya Ashamwa Babakwashwa Panya Batazar Laham Yashakar Yashar Yashakar Nanaya. See how many more verses we got in uh, chapter six. Might just have to do that separate. Click on this real quick. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much it for this chapter. I'm just gonna leave it uh as chapter five. Right? So with that, uh this is um Hosea chapter five going into the Hebrew. Oh, let's look at this real quick before I close out. Uh the history of the Tainos, the Taino Indians. Go into some uh, background on Ephraim, which are the so-called Puerto Ricans today. It says Taino, Arawakan speaking people who at the time of Christopher Columbus exploration inhabited what are now Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Once the most numerous indigenous people of the Caribbean, the Taino may have numbered one or two million at the time of the Spanish conquest in the late 15th century, which is why he's called Ephraim, meaning fruitfulness, right? It says when they were first encountered by Europeans, the Taino practice a high-yielding form of shifting agriculture to grow their staple foods, cassava and yams. They would burn the forest or scrub and then heap the ashes and soil into the mound so that they could be easily planted, tended, and irrigated. Corn, beans, squash, tobacco, peanuts, and peppers were also grown. And wild plants were gathered. Birds, lizards, and small animals were hunted for food. The only domesticated animals being dogs, and occasionally parrots, used to decoy wild birds within range of hunters. Fish and shellfish were another important food source. So let's read on down, see what else we can get out of this. 
says the Taino were easily conquered by the Spaniards beginning in 1493. Enslavement, starvation, and disease reduced them to a few thousand by 1520 and to near extinction by 1550. Those who survived mixed with Spaniards, Africans, and others. Taino culture was largely wiped out, although several group groups claiming Taino descent gained visibility in the late 20th century, notably in Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. state of Florida, right? Because Ephraim and Manasseh are brethren, right? They're, they're the sons of Joseph, right? Which Manasseh are the so-called Cubans today. So that makes sense that some of them would be amongst the uh, tribe of Manasseh. It says in the U.S. state of Florida in 1998, the United Confederation of Taino People, which characterizes itself, yada, 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 yada. Right, so they were easily conquered. Why? Because the Lord had uh, was now with them. Right? They were going off eating lizards and shit. So that's pretty much it. This is Hosea chapter 5 going to the Hebrew. Brother Yatazadak, hero of Israel. And as always, Lord willing, you gratified. Give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Kakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Middle Stone. Amen. Shalom.